really there's only one thing I ever look for, and that's for somebody who has a, a, a total obsession with becoming famous. George fixed a steely eye on us and said, we want to be the biggest group in the world and you've got one year. I've been managing pop and rock groups for 50 years now. That's me in 1966, and this is me today. And by now, there's not much I don't know about getting the best out of creative people. During the last five decades, I've managed the Yardbirds with Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page, Mark Bolan, Japan, Ultravox, Asia, Boney M, Candy Staffen, Wham with George Michael. I even found time to write You Don't Have to Say You Love Me for Dusty Springfield and Elvis. These days I give talks about the music industry, its history, its anecdotes, how it works. No, it's not like a marriage, because in a marriage you know you're there for life and you work something out between you. Oh, we have a little free time here, you have Wednesdays off, we will sleep in separate rooms, whatever you work out. No, an artist and a manager relationship is 24-7. The artist thinks he has you there the whole time, will call you any time of day or night, will throw it like at you. Oh, what? Yes, another way. Like a jealous lover. He set the standard. He, he invented how bad it could. People always thought pop could be bad, but they never had the courage to make it as bad as it could be until he showed them how. <laughs> <laughs> Kit Lambert, who managed The Who, had this idea to smash up a hotel room. We'll all get the papers, great, we'll have this big bit of press. And he told Keith Moon, he said, you've got to smash your hotel room. Keith, he liked being in a hotel room. I don't want to smash the hotel room. I rather like it, Kit. <laughs> But never forget, the music industry is about making music that can be sold.